What's the latest position, Doctor? Will he survive the operation? Can you tell us the exact nature please, of his please, condition? Please, gentlemen, please. I'm sorry, but I've no information for you at the moment. Oh, come off it, Doc. Look, we've got a job to do as well. It's not every day that one of our top foreign office officials has a brain hemorrhage. Perrigan Hazlitt would is news. What are the chances of him being permanently affected due to serious it's brain impossible damage, Doc? Oh, come on, Doctor, give us Gentlemen, a break. Gentlemen, I shall be going along to the theatre in due course. If there is any news, you'll be informed. Take over for a few minutes, will you? What are you two men doing in here? Wait! No! No, wait! My patient! What's happened to Hazlitt? What? Is he dead, Mr. Walker? Did they kill him? No. He isn't dead. He's completed it. It's a perfect operation.
dozens of neurosurgeons who could have taken over. So go on. Well, I've narrowed the field down. The man who replaced Walker was physically similar. Haven't the police checked all this? Yes, and they're in the clear. Well, all that proves is that the man wasn't from England. Well, it's something. Walker could be in on it, you know. What makes you say that? Well, he left the operating theater. Now, if he'd stayed... Stuart, it doesn't hold up. It, with the kind of operation involved and the time it takes, I mean, he was certain to leave for a while. Yes, but he was capable of successfully completing the operation himself. Presumably. Why should anyone go to the trouble of putting their own man in? The authorities have obviously not come up with an answer. Why do you say that? You didn't recognize him? Stuart Sullivan, Department S. Perhaps Walker did plan to murder his patient. Someone found out, and so the imposter took over. With what motive? Well, Hazlitt Wood's death would be a considerable loss to the West. That alone makes him a fair target. Well, I don't buy it, but I'll keep an open mind. Come in. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sullivan? Yes. And a colleague of mine, Anna Belkhurst. Miss Hurst, I've been asked to give you every assistance. Frankly, I didn't see how I can help you any more than I did the police. Well, let's start by seeing the operating theater, shall we? Certainly. Oh, uh, Mr. Jason King is already there. What's the matter? I've just taken my temperature. According to this, it's 86. May I? Yes, well, in my considered opinion, you've got a case of galloping hypochondria. What are you <laughs> laughing at? I could be seriously ill. In fact, I'm feeling rather faint. No, I think you're about to make a miraculous recovery. You had the thermometer the wrong way around. 86 becomes 98. Normal. <laughs> well, that's a great relief. <laughs> well, now maybe we can get down to business. Uh, Annabelle, would you feed the invalid all the information we have so far? All of it? No, don't confuse me with perfunctory details. My main concern is with Peregrine Hazlitt Wood. Well, it's a name that's not easy to forget. It's hardly surprising. He's the world's foremost expert on Eastern European affairs. He's also the Foreign Office representative to NATO and the chairman of... No, the... it's not what I meant. No, it's a name that rings a bell from my distant past. Something that Agatha Pollen, Istanbul. Come again. Hazlitt Wood, Istanbul. Jason, I don't know what you're talking about, but if you're suggesting he's been there, you're wrong. Well, I've been through the record a hundred times. He's never been there? No. How very mysterious. Is it? Agatha Pollan. Who is she? Uh, would you excuse me? Do you think you could manage without me? Agatha Pollan. Jason, who is she? Agatha Pollan? She's a woman. So I assumed. A woman who, if she'd done what I suggested years ago, wouldn't be anything like the person she is today. Check. Late. Brilliant. Oh, Agatha, I wish your books were as good as your chess. Jason, how can you possibly say that when you turn up the drivel that is Mark Cade? How many copies did your last book sell? I measure my success by the IQ of the reader. Sentiment will get you nowhere. Oh, which reminds me, I brought you something. The very first Mark Kane. Do you remember when I wrote it? Istanbul Iliad. Terrible title. Your ill-considered refusal to succumb to my base desires prompted me to go to Istanbul in the first place. Read the inscription. Hmm. I'm 
very flattered. Do you remember Peregrine? Peregrine? Oh, Hazlitt Wood, yes. We were at Cambridge together. Of course you were. Do you remember you told me to look him up in Istanbul to gain some sophistication, you said? Did I? Well, he was a particular friend of yours, wasn't he? Well, if I did tell you to look up Peregrine, I certainly don't remember it. Well, for heaven's sake, Jason, it must be 15, yes, 15 years ago now. Good heavens. This is as long ago as that. I must go. Oh, uh, goodbye. And Jason, I wish I had said yes 15 years ago. I might have saved the world from Mark Kane. Goodbye, Agatha. Can I borrow your car? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Doesn't do to keep this Harley Street specialist waiting. Well, let's hope Walker produces something positive. Nothing much to go on at the moment. Perhaps Hazlitt Wood will tell us something when he regains consciousness. Yeah, maybe. What's the time? Oh, I must go. Thanks. Bye. 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 It. Anyway, she saw us. Doesn't matter. We know that we need to. You're really rather good at this, aren't you? Incredible though it may seem, I mean the ambassador's team against Asia. And he's a poor loser. The worst. Stupid game. You really must do better than that, King. Plenty of time. Oh, you were saying about Hazlitt Wood. Oh, yes. How well do you know him? Very well indeed. He's improving. Well, can I talk to him? Later, perhaps. Istanbul. Oh, yes, I don't know how important it is, but I'm certain that Hazlitt Wood was there. No, you're mistaken. He's never been to Istanbul. You sound very positive. Well, I think it was a couple of years or so ago. We were attending a conference at Marrakesh. I was fortunate enough to be able to go on to Istanbul directly afterwards. It was my first visit to Turkey. I distinctly remember Peregrine being just a little envious. Apparently, it was one of the few countries he hadn't visited. Oh, sorry, your shot. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, why should he want to hide a thing like that? You could be mistaken. Anyway, if I were you, I would pursue some other line of investigation or keep to the facts like Miss Hurst. And you're absolutely certain that there's nothing that would help you to recognize the other surgeon? I hardly saw him, Miss Hurst. Just a brief glimpse, that's all. And don't forget, he was masked. Well, there must be something, uh, about his work, even. Something that might indicate his identity to us. Please think again. Solomon. Jason. How's the patient? Condition is improving. Good. I want you to try something out on him. Get a copy of one of Agatha Pollan's books. You're bound to find one in the hospital library. Give it to him and see what his reaction is. And if that fails, ask him outright if he's ever been to Istanbul. Istanbul again? Jason, what are you up to? I have no idea. I just don't like conflicting information. All right. I will do. What time do you think you'll be back here? 
Uh, the way things are going, about an hour or so. Now, don't forget, Agatha Pollen. How are you feeling? Oh, I uh, thought you might like to have something to read later. I hope it's not heavy going. It's an uh, Agatha Pollen. Oh, yes. Well, I just wanted to get this to you. I, I don't want to bother you. Thanks. Uh, for the book. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Question? Yes. Have you ever been to Istanbul? No. Why exactly? Well, it's not important. There are books about Istanbul. I thought it might bring back memories. I'm certain they were following me. I lost them very quickly. I didn't really get a good look at them. That's a pity. But what about Walker? Nothing definite. Look, I taped the interview. I'll get it typed up and see if you get copies. You know, we've done no better than the police. We've got nothing. Except for a reaction from Hazlitt Wood and two different stories. Well, what's your next move, Jason? Oh, I've got a plane to catch in a couple of hours. Well, if you want me for anything, I'll be in Istanbul. I wondered if you could help me. Nay, it's still so news, Miss Collier. I Collion. just wanted to ask you something. What do you want to know? How long have you been working here? Um, I forget. <laughs> uh, nearly 30 years. Do you remember him? Should I? He used to live here. No. I don't know him. Well, imagine him younger, say 15 years ago. 15 years, 20 years. What difference does it make? I've never seen him. He's English? English, American, Russian. If there's something to hide, they come, they go. I mind my business. It's safer. How many children have you got? Eight. You do live dangerously. If he was here, he would have known a man named Corland. He'll help you. Corland. Yeah. Where do I find him? Of course, Mr. King. May I say that I deem it an honor? Indeed, so I will go further. A great honor to find myself in the same company as the creator of Mark Kane. Well, thank you. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Colland. Despite our surroundings, how long have you been a fan? A fanatic, you might say. I've modeled my whole life on Mark Kane. Really? I see myself as the personification of that esteemed gentleman. Mm. And what do you say to that, Mr. King? Well, Mark Kane will be very flattered, I'm sure. You're a man of tact, Mr. King. I like that. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> no. <coughs> you, you want my help? Huh? Ah, yes. Do you recognize him? Well, oh, it's been a long time. He's older, grayer, but this is the man. Anything else? Tread carefully, Mr. King. Really? 
But if you choose to ignore my warning, visit the Crusader Club. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha Yes. Show me the photograph. The one you are handing around. I can't be absolutely certain. It was many years ago. You knew him? If it was him, but, uh, he came to the club sometimes. Then he had an accident. An accident? What kind of accident? I can't exactly remember. To his head. I think it was. His head? Now think. Did he have an operation? Now it's very important. <laughs> Yes, I, I told Jason. I simply couldn't remember if Peregrine had been to Turkey. How well did you know Peregrine at Cambridge? Oh, we were very good friends to start off with. We were both passionately left-wing politically. Oh? Oh, don't read anything into it. It was just a passing phase for him. Yes, he changed almost overnight. Became a staunch supporter of the establishment. Well, I suppose it doesn't matter now. I haven't seen him in years. Didn't it strike you as rather odd, that sudden change? Yes, I suppose it did at first. But if you think about it, it's quite logical. 
His public school background, father a minister in the government. His parents were extremely rich, not that he ever hit it off with them. I suppose we all change, even Jason. Again, I apologize for the inconvenience. No, 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 it's quite understandable. You're most kind. Goodbye, Mr. King. Goodbye, and thank you. Don't worry, it's all over. It was perfectly obvious to that intelligent chief of police that the knife was planted on me. I told you it would be. Oh. We haven't got this thing upside down, have you? It's not English. Oh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. How long ago was this hospital built? Hmm? I said, how long ago was this hospital built? Oh, I'm not quite sure. 25, 28 years, something like that. If someone had an accident for head injuries, um, say, 15 years ago. Would they be admitted here? I should think so. Why do you ask? No reason. Well, then they wouldn't have had the facilities then, or for that matter, the specialists to carry out brain surgery, would they? Well, that would depend on how serious the condition of the patient was. Very serious. In that case, they could have flown the patient out for the operation or brought in a neurosurgeon. From where? Moscow. I think you've done enough talking. Well, Russia's the nearest country. Yes, but not necessarily the most obliging. He would have had to have been very important indeed. Yes, he would, wouldn't he? Yes, he would, to the Russians. Now, come along, Jason, Mr. King. It's time for your rest. How far back do your records date? Well, that's none of your business. Lie down. Well, I don't suppose they compare with British hospitals anyway. Mr. King. Our records office compares favorably with any hospital in London you care to name. Our records date back to the day the hospital was built. Now, you lie there, and you don't dare get up. Understand? Perfectly.
Mr. King. I accept it. Hazlitt Wood was in Istanbul. And maybe he suffered a head injury. But it was impossible for the Turks to carry out brain surgery at that time. But if a surgeon capable of performing that kind of operation was brought in from the outside, using the available equipment, operated on Hazlitt Wood... None of that is based on fact. Let, let's forget fact, just for one minute. Are you still working on the Russian theory, Jason? Yes, I am. Well, Annabelle's right. It's mostly guesswork. No, it's more than that. Well, look, we're talking about something that happened ages ago and trying to fit it in with something that's just happened. I believe that there is a connection. And we also know that the surgeon who took over from Walker wasn't English. He could have been Russian, in fact. Hello, have I started reaching you? Oh, stupid. That interview I did with Walker. No, sorry, it's later on than that. I thought I recognized the style or the craftsmanship, shall we say. And Who's I he talking the about? Because it just wasn't possible. You see, it seemed to me that it was the work of the Russian neurosurgeon, Yuri Dutrov. Well, there you are. Now, what have I been saying? I checked on Dutrov. According to the Russian who's who, he was one of their top surgeons 20 years ago. It's all beginning to fit. Well, I want to know why Walker dismisses the possibility of the imposter being Yuri Dutrov. Dutrov may well have performed surgery on Hazlitt Wood 20 years ago. That's something I really wouldn't know about, but I'm quite sure he didn't take over from me this time. You said you thought it was a possibility the last time I spoke to you. What I said, Miss Hurst, was that the workmanship, the technique of the operation, bore strong resemblance to Dutrov's methods. But Yuri Dutrov, if he's still alive, must be well into his 70s by now. Nothing's been heard of him for years. Doctor, I'm not trying to get you to say something you don't want to, but is it remotely possible that Dutrov completed the operation on Hazlitt Wood? I'll put like that, I suppose, yes, it is remotely possible. You did right to contact me before continuing with the case, Sullivan. What you've just told me puts a very different and serious complexion on this matter. Where are we going? I want you to meet someone. Do I know him? I doubt it. Unless, of course, you mix without my knowledge with the British Secret Service. Sir Curtis. Hello, Henry. Stuart Sullivan, Department S. I've heard a lot about you, Sullivan. Now, please sit down. I was very disturbed at your communication, Sir Curtis. In fact, I went as far as asking one of my agents in Istanbul to check the information you gave me. I see. Well, what's the position now, Henry? Would you prefer Department S to get off the case? On the contrary. We feel it's better for you to stay with it, keeping us informed. What's your next move, Sullivan? Well, with your permission, to visit Moscow. Wood. Does the name mean anything to you, Professor Dutrop? No, Mr. Sullivan, nothing. Why should I know this man? Because two weeks ago, he underwent extensive brain surgery in a London hospital. The operating surgeon was forcibly removed from the theater, and another surgeon took over. I see. And how does it concern me? The surgical methods used strongly resemble your own. You think I have been sent to London to take over from the operating surgeon? I consider it a possibility. Mr. Sullivan, I'm an old man. I haven't held a scalpel in years. Well, then if it wasn't you, is it possible for you to suggest who could have operated using your methods? Mr. 
Mr. Sullivan, I think it's about time that you leave. You won't answer my question. I say to you, I cannot help you. I thank you for seeing me, Professor Dutroff. Would you see yourself out, Mr. Sullivan? Of course. Was it satisfactory, gentlemen? I've been expecting you, Mr. Sullivan. Oh, well, where are you? Switch the lights on. Switch it on the wall over there. Good. That no longer gives me the unfair advantage I had over you. Yes, Mr. Sullivan. I'm blind. Please sit down. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. At least it proves that I could not have performed the operation you referred to. Yes. Uh, but you would have taught your methods. You would have trained many surgeons in your ways. That is true. And I think you do know Hazlett Wood. I believe you met him 20 years ago. He was in Istanbul. He had an accident. You were flown south through the Turkish border. After the operation, he was smuggled back into Istanbul, and you returned to Moscow. It might have happened like that. But why did a surgeon trained by you take over in London? Because the patient held a position in Britain which made it impossible for him to reveal his earlier treatment. I see. If they knew that 20 years ago you'd operated, They'd ask why, and why Hazlett Wood was so important to Russia. Without the knowledge and the background of his previous injury, the operating surgeon would have worked at a disadvantage. So someone skilled in your technique had to take over? To lessen the risk. Without that knowledge, the patient surely would have died. So they saved his life. So he's definitely been working for them for 20 years or more. So it would seem. I'm sorry about that, Henry. That puts you in a very awkward position. <laughs> to say the least. Well, you must have done something. The matrons warned all the nursing staff to stay away from you. What well, can I help it if matron finds me so irresistible? She wants to keep me all to herself. Hey, don't forget, I'm on duty all night. Jason, quickly. Get a doctor quickly. He's had a relapse.
business. Well, Sir Curtis. Uh, Henry, I'm at the hospital. I'm afraid uh, Hazlitt Woods had a relapse. How serious is it, do they know? Well, Walker's just completed the preliminary investigation. It seems it necessitates further surgery, urgently. I see. This alters things. Where can I get you if I need you? I'll be at the embassy. Fine. Good night, Sir Curtis. will take several hours. A statement will be issued at the end of it. Do you think his chances are fair, do you, Stuart? Well, as they're aware of the whole case history, I see no reason why it shouldn't go off without a hitch. Walker isn't exactly trained in Dutroff's methods. Will that add another risk? Well, apparently Dutroff's methods aren't complicated. You just have to know them. Stuart? I don't know. Prison. Probably for life, if they save him. spoken to Walker. Yes, I did. And that everything was, was satisfactory. I can't say that I approve of your choice of words. But he understood the position? Perfectly. And agreed to, to cooperate. I got that impression. Adrenaline. It's taking rather a long time. Perhaps you prefer to complete the task yourself. That's not possible. Isn't it? Could Walker have... have reconsidered, do you think? How would I know? But you saw him before he went in. Mr. Smith. Whatever questions I answer now won't change what's going on in there.
very sorry to have to tell you that Mr. Hazlitt Wood died a few minutes ago. Dead? But you knew about Dutrov. You knew the history. His heart wasn't strong. I wasn't able to stand the strain of further surgery. Doctor, I don't believe you. You're telling us a pack of lies. Stuart. I'm sorry, Doctor. Mr. Sullivan appears to be upset. You realize what they've done, don't you? They've killed him! Stuart! There's absolutely nothing we can do about it. He isn't there. Well, I'm gonna do something. You gave the order, Smith. You murdered him. I don't have to justify my actions to you, Sullivan, or to anyone else. Hazlitt Wood died of natural causes, and it's lucky for all of us that he did. Some luck. They sent a surgeon into London and kept him alive because of his knowledge. If he'd lived, his friends on the other side would have been desperately trying to find some poor, unsuspecting diplomat to hang a spy charge on and use him for a swap. It's better this way. He died from natural causes. But I don't intend to let the matter rest here, believe me! I'm sorry, Sir Curtis. I asked you to come because I knew you'd be needed. If you think I can be pressurized into dropping this Sullivan. thing... All right, I think you'd better go. We just can't win, can we? Not ever. Explain the facts of life to him, will you, Sir Curtis? It's so unlike you, Sullivan. Well, let's just put it down to a touch of conscience. Are you being very naive? I set it up. We solved the case. If we hadn't, that man might be alive. You call me naive for seeing through this whitewashing campaign? Sullivan, it's a dirty business. Boy, you can say that again. Both sides of the curtain.